Good morning, YouTube. I'm very excited about the content. I just wanted to get on real quick. I don't even have my hair done. The amount of time that it would take me to get my hair done or to brush my hair up, I might miss what I'm really trying to record this morning, which is this morning sun. I'm not going to put the camera directly to the light, but I just want to let you see a little bit. And this is the morning sun that I get over my patio garden and I just want to show you guys a little bit of what's been going on recently Let's see if I can turn this camera around so even though it is November 11th Sunday um, the Sun makes it feel like a early spring morning um, we are in North Carolina few things going on on my patio. I got a few things going on on my patio. Uh, this is my greenhouse and it's not zipped up right now because I want to let a little bit of cool air come in. Those are lettuce. Those are lettuces. I guess the plural of lettuce is lettuces. I don't know. But lettuce love cool weather but I didn't want them to get any more rain. So I stuck them in the greenhouse real quick just to make sure they didn't get overwatered by the amount of rain we were getting. I think we're supposed to get some more rain tomorrow. And then my cilantro plants, I always keep them in the greenhouse because they don't really like cold weather, I don't think. So, but, and, and I probably lost a few of the buds. They should have been kept on the grow lights, but you know, as I said in previous posts on Instagram and others before, you know, there's a learning opportunity here. But really what I wanted to show you was how the light comes in right now. I don't even think it's eight o'clock yet, Eastern time. And I've allowed these um, dried leaves to be in my pots. I've actually put some in there myself just to get a little bit of warmth because it's been being really cold. And these are my snap pea plants. All of these guys are snap peas except for this one. This is my microgreens of radishes. See my little tag. And I can't even remember what these guys are, these big tall guys. I want to say that they're actually okra plants. And from everything that I've read after I've already planted these, I've been told that they don't really like cold weather. They actually like um, heat, super heat. And then this is some more lettuce. Those are lettuce. They're just finally starting to sprout up. And then here's some more um, radish. I'm going to try to get individual plants of these. That's why they're in these little peat pots. Um, so... These are my early scarlet glow radishes. Is a plural of radish, radishes? I don't know. And I can't for the life of me remember what those are. I believe and I think that these guys right here, I don't know. They may be some peppers. I think those are my green peppers. Green peppers and some more Cali Wonder, uh, California Wonder peppers so and that over there that is my free coffee grinds grounds from starbucks so if you are um if you are looking for some things to help you with composting and to build your soil quality then just go ahead and get them from the standalone locations i've tried to call some of the starbucks locations in certain stores like harris teeter grocery stores here has um, Starbucks uh, kiosks in there and they don't do it, but the standalone Starbucks stores will give you as much as you like. My husband went and picked these two bags up and it's more than enough that we need. Um, in this pot here, it's supposed to be some more, um, I don't even remember. I had some black seeded lettuce in there, but it wasn't sprouting. So I don't know what was the deal with that. Um, and I can't for the life of me remember now what I put in there. I should have a tag in there. Oh, 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 no, nah, I do remember. 
it's the turnips. I put some turnips, some microgreen turnips. So I might have to continue to put those under light. Um, but my understanding is that turnips is a cool weather plant. It likes cool weather. And now that I think about it, these are my peppers because look at how those leaves are like kind of hooked. And I do know that these guys are peppers because I tagged those. Let's see them here. So that's the California Wonder. And they look exactly like these guys. So, yeah. Um, I don't remember the variety of lettuce that these are, but it's either the Black Seeded Simpson or the Green Salad Bowl. Cause I didn't, I have iceberg as well. I have those seeds, but I don't think I've planted very many of them. And then there's my water can. And this is a fake flower thing that I had near my uh, fireplace. And so it was getting beyond its time. I had it earlier this year, maybe some last year in some little vases that I had, but I just decided that it would hide the little wood pieces of wood that we put in our fireplace on my patio. So that's its use. And then this is my water can. But I wanted to show you guys also what I found from Goodwill. This is a cute and interesting interesting little uh, trash can, I, I suppose. It is the Market Square, Providence, Rhode Island, 1898. And what I figured I'd do is get my husband to put some holes in there. You know, it has some little indentations down there so maybe those could actually be the places where I put the holes but I figured I could put some of these uh, radishes in there maybe like two, two or three plants down in there what do you think that's probably like a maybe a five gallon I don't know and then this is a plastic container that I got from Dollar Tree these are some different versions of pots from Dollar Tree that you know whenever I need something and I don't want to spend a whole lot of money Dollar Tree is my friend and then look at this so I found these in a clearance bin at Harris Teeter you can't see how much it is now but because they've been washed but I figured these little pots could help me do some starters because what I'm finding is that these little peat pots aren't that good. They kind of breed mold and fungus. And even though mold and fungus may not necessarily be a bad thing in the soil, I don't really want that to be on my, my little seedlings, my starters, you know? So, and especially when I put it in the greenhouse, they kind of, uh, get like this they kind of get a little nasty see that one back there they get a little nasty so I figured if I could find another type of container that's just the same size and these were perfect um, of course we ate the peas out of this but yeah so that's what's there and then also I thought this was pretty cool too it's a little tin can and I thought these would just be the perfect things to put some plants in, in my garden. And uh, look at those little interesting things. I got those out of Dollar Tree as well. So that's what I got going on. Um, usually I put most of these little trays in my greenhouse right now they're just on the floor because I was getting some light yesterday we didn't get rain yesterday we actually just got it was a sunny day it was still a cool day but it was a sunny day so I figured they benefit well by being in the sun and it was just a perfect thing because they actually stayed out here all night long and that was good because then they get to benefit from the the sun so 
and you know most plants or most vegetables that you plant love the sun so I just love the way it looks out here we won't have very many more days out here we're gonna get us a house here soon so hopefully by December we'll be in a different location and I've already been at that location that we're probably gonna go and it also gets really great morning sun my challenge with the new house that we may potentially get is that you know we're here I have a contained space so I'm on the third floor and I have these gates that keep me within a certain space. When we go to the house, I may actually need to create a space where people know that they can't come and just mess with these things. And that will be my challenge at a house, at that house or at any house as a matter of fact, unless it's a fenced in or gated uh, backyard. Try to move these because I don't want the I don't want the them to block the sun. So that's what I got going. I probably need to move these peppers into the sun too. See, and I love these little pots. These are fabric pots. I intended to buy some of those smart pots that I see Cali Kim. Um, and if you don't know who I'm talking about, Cali Kim is a lady on Instagram and YouTube that um, plants. And you can follow her at Cali Kim 29, C A L I K I M 29. And uh, she has some smart pots that are similar to these, and they have her name on it. But Smart Pots is a brand. And then they've got a version that's just for her. I'm just going to leave that one there because it is kind of getting a little bit of sun, sun there. So I'm going to get up off of my lawn chair. Hold on a second. Yeah, and just what I normally try to do is just kind of scout and see where the sun is peeking in and try to give my plants as much of it as they can take. Probably this would get a little bit more if I had more soil in there, but I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. So, um, I'm hoping that these, I'm, I'm going to have to train these. I did buy some ties and uh, rope and things uh, once they get a little bit longer so I can train them to do certain things, you know, to be, to wrap around these sticks that I found, you know, but I'm just, I noticed that when I mess with them too much, some of them will break off. So I wanted to just give them a little bit more time to grow a little bit more before I start really like forcing them to attach to these things, to these, these sticks here. So um, I did order some of the Vermistera worm castings and the Vermistera worm tea. So I'm pretty sure that all of this stuff could use a dousing of that. Um, I elected to delay my order so that I could get $5 credit on some other stuff. So that's why it's taking so long, but they really could use some fertilizer. That's what fertilizes, my, you know, Cali Kim's garden and Gary Pillar check from the Rustic Garden. That's what they use, and that's what I'm going to use. And looking back, that's probably what I was missing from my garden this spring. You know, if you follow me on Instagram, Shonda underscore J underscore Stevens. That's S H O N D A underscore J 
underscore S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I had a garden this spring, early spring. I had cabbage. I had um, uh, onion chives. I had peppermint. Well, my peppermint is still here. It's just kind of, I'm letting it overwinter. That sit in this little purple container. Um, and please ignore this. I'm just, I'm somebody who just likes to reuse things. This is my tomato plant that the frost killed. So I'm just leaving it in there and letting it kind of decompose in there with the with the peppermint plant. But my understanding is that once it warms back up, the peppermint plant will flourish. It's fine. Um, it's been getting watered by the rain, so it's pretty good. Um, so that's what's in there. But the, I had a peppermint, onion chives. I had a tomato plant, of course. I had a cabbage plant. Um, later on, I tried to do some soybeans, but it just wasn't working for me. But I was pretty new to... Let me turn this camera around. I was pretty new to gardening, so I didn't really know how to see start. And then I started watching more videos and... I've kind of gotten a little bit better at it, as you can tell. The garden in the spring was started with small plants that I bought from Walmart, really. I bought the peppermint, the onion chives, the um, tomato plant, um, and the cucumber. I had a cucumber plant as well. The cucumber plant were all things that I got from Walmart. The cabbage plant was actually something that was given to my daughter at the end of her third grade year. So it was from Bonnie's plants, Bonnie's cabbage, cabbage program or something. And she was supposed to grow it over this summer and um, turn it in like her fourth grade year. And of course we didn't turn it in because by the time uh, school started back, which is at the end of August here in Charlotte Mecklenburg schools, um, it had kind of died. You know, I had some pest issues going on. I had some spider mites. I had, you know, just a lot of things going on in my garden that I did not know how to cure. And because I am on the third floor in an apartment and I have this patio garden in my, you know, on my apartment, attached to my apartment, um, I didn't want to be spraying a whole lot of chemical fertilizer that may impact the people below me on the second floor and maybe also on the bottom floor. And I'm gonna turn it back around so I'm gonna show you what the people on the bottom floor have going on. And that's another reason why I didn't wanna do chemical fertilizers, but um, here you go. So these are the people that live below me. They're on the first floor and they've got some things going on. I really want to know what that plan is right there because it has been doing pretty well um all season long it's not had any issues and uh yeah so they've got some stuff going on and here's the other side of it so see and whatever that guy is right let me see you can see my finger see that pink and green thing that is beautiful i don't know what that is i'm gonna ask them i'm definitely gonna ask them what that is so that I can start growing that wherever I am but yeah so I just had pests going I had a frog that wanted to sleep in my watermelon plant and my cabbage plant I had you know spiders and yeah so now since watching all of these YouTube videos and following a few people on uh, YouTube and Instagram I'm learning what things all natural things that I could use to get rid of a lot of those pests um like vinegar and like seven dust and like um neem oil with the as a direct and uh for the chewing plant i mean for the chewing uh insects so i'm gonna be ready for spring and i think that's what it's all about guys um you know you can start a project like this and not really know what you're doing and i hear my daughter and her friend acting up hey y'all better be putting those clothes on so yeah they are a mess it's super early though um 
but yeah, so you know. Okay, but what's all the screaming about? Okay, put clothes on, brush your teeth. So anyway, yeah. Um, go ahead and get started with the garden. You're gonna learn so many things, and the fact that you know you may not get everything right the first time. It's an opportunity to learn what you did wrong and, and, and learn better. I don't see it as a loss when plants die or when things don't grow like I need them to grow because number one, um, I have bought so many seeds and I can probably go inside and show you my seed collection now. Compared to where I was in, in uh, February and March, I'm loads ahead of the game because I have these seeds and I spent you know, maybe 10 cents, 12 cents from Dollar General getting those seeds. So if I lose one or two plants, if I lose 10 or 20 plants, it's still worth it for me because it's not a whole lot of money that I'm spending on those seeds. Now, those plants that I bought originally, I think I may have spent like two or three dollars on those plants. The tomato plant, the peppermint and chives uh, plant, the cucumber plant. I may have spent two or three dollars on those, but I did get a harvest off of the onion chives. I got an, oh, I had a cilantro plant as well. I forgot about that. Um, and I harvested the cilantro plant. What I learned is that the cilantro doesn't like heat, which is very interesting because we I've only ever heard of cilantro because of salsa and, and, and um, people in the Latin communities using it in salsa. So you would think that because those people primarily, or you would think that they live in climates where it's pretty hot that cilantro would grow but no cilantro doesn't really like the midsummer it likes you know not early spring but it likes spring weather so i harvested my cilantro and the plant just didn't grow bad um but i'm definitely uh i got some more over there in the greenhouse and we're gonna work on it we're gonna see what it does um yeah so any any losses you know it's minimal for me that's how i see it because of what i spent you know and the harvest that i got i could have easily gone in the store and spent five or six dollars on a bunch of on on one single bunch of cilantro i could have easily went in the store and spent five dollars on a few tomatoes i could have easily gone in the grocery store and spent you know five dollars on five cucumbers you know they they're like that they cost sometimes 69 cents sometimes 99 cents every now and then when they're running sales i might be able to get a cucumber for two for a dollar 50 cent so you can imagine that spending two three four dollars on a plant from out of the garden center it's still definitely worth it. And it's more economical to do that and get multiple, multiple fruit or vegetables from that one plant that you spent two or $3 on than to go and spend $5 on five cucumbers and then you don't have anything else. Whereas the plant will continue to grow. Tomato, the tomato plant that I got that's over there, that is a indeterminate, uh, tomato, which means that it's an indeterminate amount of fruit that may be um, grown or harvested from that plant. There are determinate uh, tomatoes. I, that's not one that I got, but even with that, you still have a large number of tomatoes that you can grow from that one plant. So for me, it's still worth it. So like I said, just go ahead and get started with gardening, get started with growing your own food. I've been watching this thing on uh, YouTube with this guy, the Garden of Eden. I can't remember that guy's name, but I've just accidentally run into it. You know how YouTube just will suggest things for you. And when you finish watching one um, video, it'll prompt something else to come up by itself. And I just accidentally stumbled into his philosophy and just putting wood chips down and creating this sort of forest-like um, environment to create and build your soul. I mean, I just can't wait that for a country girl like me, whose grandmother had hogs and chickens and little baby chicks and 
um, a compost pile. I never knew what that really meant. I just remember her saying, go put that on the compost pile, you know, and we had a slop bucket in the kitchen so that, you know, she could feed like extra, like the ends of the carrots or the, you know, lettuce that she's not going to use. She fed it to the, to the hogs. Um, so for a country girl like me to be learning all this stuff that I was already taught and didn't know it, but it kind of like reactivated in my mind. Um, it's so, it's so great. It's so perfect. It's so nostalgic. And it's definitely something that I think will, um, benefit me and hopefully my daughter in the future. I only have one kid. So, um, you know, hopefully she takes this stuff with her. She likes it. She likes going shopping with me. We find seeds, we find pots, we find soil and things like that. So I like it. Um, so yeah, I just would encourage anyone who, you know, might think that they don't have the time, don't have the space, don't have the mindset to do something like this. You absolutely could. Um, after my kid is pretty good. She sleeps well. Most times she's in the bed by eight o'clock. Nine ten o'clock at night, I'm up potting plants, repotting plants, you know, doing all those things. Sometimes I do it on Saturdays and Sundays, like today is Sunday, and I'm not repotting anything, but I'm gonna buy go buy me some more soil. I'm gonna mix it with my coffee grounds, you know, for fertilizer. I'm gonna, you know, just do a few things that I can. I, I check it when I wake up in the morning, like now. I check it when I've been gone for several hours just to make sure things are okay if I'm away and it starts raining um my husband is here or you know I, I try to you know make sure that I come back in enough time to um take care of them it's not something where it's you know oh my god I gotta worry about the plants it's not even like that because you know again like right now the cool weather plants they pretty much will take care of themselves the, the cool the weather is cool I've got the dried up leaves for mulching and um, I got the greenhouse for the ones that really can't stand too much of a cold and um, they stay watered because I'm in the south like I said I'm in North Carolina and um, it's been raining and uh, I've made sure that I wet the soil pretty well before I set them out here so anyway I'm almost about 30 minutes into this video and I just wanted to just get on real quick, <laughs> not so quick, and uh, let you know what I had going on and to just encourage you guys to continue your planting throughout the cool weather. Um, so in summary, you can do this. If I can do this on the third floor black balcony of an apartment, you can do this in your your house you can do this outside of your house in your garden in your yard containers are the key um and i can't wait to get a house so i can do more than just container garden i can have my own in ground raised beds i would love that and i'm sure my uncles and my husband will um, help me get those together so if i can do it you guys can do it um and once I get something like this going and once I see that I can do it, I get pretty much obsessed with it. And I think most people would agree. I've not seen or heard of anybody being deterred from gardening. Once they realize what, what, what they need to do, they just continue to do it. So here are some people that, like I said, I follow. And if you wanna follow, if you wanna see what things you can do, you can follow these people too. I love Callie Kim. That's C-A-L-I-K-I-M-2-9. She's on Instagram and YouTube. I like Gary Pillarcheck. He's the Rustic Garden. He's on YouTube and Instagram. And also, they are also on Facebook. So look them up on all uh, social media platforms. And I'm now, really, really, I can't wait getting into Laura with Garden Answer. I've been completely obsessed with her because not so much the vegetable gardens, but she has a huge, beautiful flower garden and I love it and I just can't wait to start planting some more. I tried to do some zinnias but I think by the time I realized that um, the zinnias wouldn't grow in cooler weather 
it was starting to cool down here. They didn't really flourish that well, so the zinnia plants are somewhere in there. And they're, it's not really growing. It's a little bud, but I think I need to put it under some lights. But anyway, so Garden Answer, Laura. And then also this new thing that I'm watching is, um, what is it, Roots and Refuge. I don't know that lady's name, but I've, I've watched a few things. I like her garden. It's not, it's like a messy, organized thing. An organized mess is what it is, but I love it because it's still beautiful, you know. Um, so I'm following her, and of course, like I said, the Garden of Eden, that guy. I love what he has going on, and I'm definitely taking heed to a lot of stuff. So anyway, that's um what I got going on, my apartment garden in the city, gardening with the country girl. That's what I got going on. It's LaShonda, you guys, so subscribe to my channel, like it share it comment happy sunday guys how do i stop this thing